What's up guys? It's Tyler Prime. This time I did the intro, sorry the last one I was excited because Black Panther. We're here to watch 20 of the scariest and most iconic creepypastas. Now, it's from Mr. Nightmare. I did not notice that until I saw it um, at the bottom here, before I opened this full. Um, go subscribe to him, he makes great stories in that, and um, you already know, but King Pig, yeah? And I got me this. Just in case I get a jump scare. I'm just put that on here. Do I need to say it? Or do you already know about Darth Vader? I don't need to say more. He knows. You all know what he'll do to creepy imposters they come near him. Let's go. Hopefully this video turns out as good as I want it to be. Creepypastas are the scary campfire stories of the internet. They can yeah. range from general scary stories to lost episodes to even theories. There are countless creepypastas on the internet. Ronald's there a are creepypasta? Certain creepypastas that have by now become iconic and have in a way opened the doors to the popularity of creepypastas. Here are 20 of some of the best, scariest, and most iconic creepypastas on the internet. Let's go. Number 20, suicidemouse.avi. Oh, yeah, Lost and bootleg episode creepypastas have become very common, and one of the most well-known happens to... Warning, um, I heard that this makes you want to cut out your eyes, so I... I'm just gonna... I'm, I'm I suicide mouse. can see it in coma. Suicide Mouse is about a lost episode of a 1930s Mickey Mouse cartoon. However, it doesn't have Mickey dancing around happily or smiling at all. It's just a very ominous video of Mickey Mouse walking past six buildings that continue to loop in the background. However, as he keeps walking, you may notice everything in the background starts to become more and more damaged, and Mickey's walking speed and face will change as well. Distorted screaming and moaning sounds will also begin to play later in the video, and it will ultimately end with Mickey falling dead, with a syringe falling out of his hand, indicating he had committed suicide. I did not know he was going to show. What makes this creepypasta special is that it was one of, if not the first lost episode of creepypasta, and that it also comes with a disturbing video to go along with the story. Uh, you're, gonna, you're not going to play it, are you? Number 19, okay. No End House. Haunted houses are at the center of many famous scary narratives, with the cliched surviving the night in one earning teenagers instant respect, mm -hmm. or making it through a haunted house for a reward. No End House focuses on the narrator, David, who gets a message from a shady drug addict friend, Peter, telling him about the No End House, which earned that name because nobody had ever made it to the end. $500 is offered to whoever can survive a trip through its nine rooms of torture, a challenge that the narrator, David, readily accepts. Nope. The first few rooms start out innocent, being described as resembling the Halloween Isle of Kmart. However, the rooms begin to grow increasingly sinister and evil, pushing the limits of David's sanity. Number 18, Smile Dog. A Dang that. I'm doing... I can do challenges, but if someone told me to do a challenge in that house... You can go do it. Goodbye. I'm staying home. And I'm going to just watch my uh, YouTube. Okay, what's the story about this? According to legend, Smile.jpg is a supposedly haunted image dating back to the beginning of the internet. Smile.jpg has a reputation for driving those who view it insane, making its victims view it in their mind's eye at every turn. While it's been discovered that these images in the victims' minds are the results of epileptic seizures, there's no clear understanding of just why the image causes this. All the victims who spoke up about their experiences, however, have said that they were also visited by the dog-like creature in the image, named Smile Dog. When in these dreams, the only thing the victims can do is watch and listen as Smile Dog tells them that the only way to end their torment is to spread the word by sending somebody else the picture. In this creepypasta, it's said that those who saw the image either disappeared or died, except for one lady named Mary B, who the narrator goes to interview. What he eventually learns is that some things, Jeez, even like. simple pictures, are better left mysteries rather than dealing with the horrifying truth. Sending this to Jenny? Number 17. Dead. It's all you. The strangest you. security tape I've ever seen. <laughs> 
In this creepypasta, we meet the narrator who works at a gas station in rural Pennsylvania, where a new employee named Jeremy shows up, described as weird and quiet the by dwarves? the narrator. The dwarves. After Jeremy starts working there, strange things start happening. For example, entire shipments of motor oil disappearing. The narrator is asked by his boss to watch the security tapes to catch Jeremy in the act, but he doesn't catch Jeremy doing anything wrong at all. He sweeps the floors, assists customers at checkout, and stocks shelves. But where it gets strange is when the same customers routinely start coming in, buying the same exact items, making the same exact movements. Things only get stranger from here, as the narrator starts to suspect the time loop he is in has something to do with Jeremy. Number 16, Pen Pal. Pen Pal is a very long series of posts told via a series of recollections by an anonymous narrator trying to make sense of his childhood. As a very young boy, he decided to participate in a Pen Pal program where children tried to find Pen Pals by attaching a letter to a balloon, which they released in the hopes that... There's Pen Pals. Okay. They would reach someone that would write back. Oh, no. While the other children received responses, the narrator does not, and it's assumed that his balloon did not reach anyone. However, as he grows, he and his childhood friend Josh begin to find that someone is following them, and mm -hmm. that this person is far from sane. No. Nope. Pen Pal is so horrifying and well-written that it was actually considered to be adapted into a film by an Oscar-winning movie producer. Huh. Number 15, Laughing Jack. Ah, oh, no, man. Laughing Jack is a murderous clown. His preferred method of killing is slicing open the stomach of said victim, removing the innards, and stuffing the body with candy. Before he kills his victim, usually a young child, he becomes imaginary friends with them. Said child then becomes comfortable with Laughing Jack coming in their room and will suspect nothing when he murders them. Huh. The original creepypasta introducing Laughing Jack. It's said that after the parent discovers the boy is murdered, they accidentally stab the boy in the heart in an attempt to stab Laughing Jack. Oh, when the authorities no. arrive, it looks like the parent had murdered the boy herself. The parent was charged with insanity and was sent to a mental institution. There is never an explanation for what happened to Laughing Jack, so one can only imagine that he is still at large. Hey, I Number believe 14, in Dead Bart. One of the better known and more believable lost episode about of pastas, Dead Bart is a creepypasta story about a lost episode of The Simpsons in which Bart dies after falling from an airplane. The narrator of the creepypasta confronts Matt Groening, one of the creators of The Simpsons, about a lost episode that everybody affiliated with the show refuses to acknowledge. Groening gives him a website address and begs him to never speak about the episode again. When the narrator visits the website, he finds nothing but a download link which contains the lost episode. In the episode, Bart breaks the window on a plane and is sucked out. After his death, his family apparently sits at their kitchen table and cries for an entire year before going to visit his grave. At the cemetery, Bart's hyper-realistic corpse is laying on top of his grave, and all the other graves bear the names of the Simpsons' guest stars even those who had not appeared on the show at the time the episode would have been written. A sequel has been written by the same author, known as A Dead Bart Update. Number 13, Robert the Doll. Unlike many creepypastas on this list, this one is based on something that is confirmed to exist. Man, I bet if that appeared in my house, I'll grab matches and burn it up. <laughs> Put a grub by bag, throw it in, tie it up, throw it in a trash can, close it up, Put something above it, like a thousand bricks. Flame on! <laughs> Robert the Dow is real. The myths surrounding him vary, especially since he became so popular on the internet. Never the Dow was given to artist Robert Eugene Otto in the late 1800s or early 1900s by a servant working in his family home. The Dow, which he named after himself, then took on a life of its own and began to terrorize the family. Otto was said to have kept his doll into adulthood, and it subsequently tormented his late wife to insanity. When the doll was found by another family, the girl to whom it was given was terrified of it and refused to have it in her room. The doll is currently residing in the Fort East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida. Visitors must ask Robert politely if they want to take his photo. If they mock him or take his photo without permission, Robert is said to lay a curse on them. 
Hell no. No. I ain't going to take no pictures of no one. Hell, if mom wants to take photos of it, <laughs> nope. Let's go to take photos. Let's take photos of the Statue of Liberty. I don't know what. I don't know what he said. I wasn't paying attention, but I don't care. I'm gonna be cursed. Let me guess the right. A Nazi's Goatman story. Okay. The story follows a teenager who goes down to Alabama to be with his extended family. While he, his cousins, and their friends are camping out in the woods, they see a strange figure, the Goatman, drifting about and spouting gibberish as it follows them. Mm -mm. They spend the rest of the night in fear as the Goatman stalks and harasses the group, terrorizing the teens into a frenzied state of paranoia. Uh -huh. Number 11, The Rugrats Theory. Okay. There are so many genres of creepypastas, one of the big ones being theory creepypastas, and the Rugrats theory is the most well-known, and also the most believable of those. Oh, the I think it's because, I think it was that she thing has, that they said that they mad, she imagines all these kids, and those kids are actually dead, so, so, she made up these kids in her mind, so she can play with them, or something like that. I think that's what it was that the Rugrats never existed at all. Yeah. That they were actually just figments of Angelica's imagination. It may sound far-fetched already, but if you read it yourself, you'll see that in the story's credit, the pieces could fit together. Number 10, The Slender Man. Oh, we all know about the this. The Slender Man by now. Yep. Originating as an internet meme created by Something Awful Forms user Eric Nudson in 2009, the Slender Man has since become a huge part of the internet, as well as opening the creepypasta world to many. For those that don't know, the Slender Man is a being who looks like a man with extremely long, slender arms and legs. He also appears to have mean. four to eight long black tentacles that protrude from his back at will. Despite the fact that it's rumored that he kills children almost exclusively, it's difficult to say whether or not his only objective is slaughter. Oftentimes it's reported that he can be found in sections of woods, and these generally tend to be suburban. He also has been reported seen with large groups of children, as many photographs portray. It's commonly thought that he resides in woods and forests and preys on children. He seems unconcerned with being exposed in daylight or captured in photos. The Slender Man definitely remains one of the most interesting topics in the creepypasta world. I didn't see him though. Number 9, Candle Cove. Candle the story is presented in the format of a message board a conversation candle. among numerous participants who These managed shows, to piece together their memories of an undocumented children's TV show about a young girl named Janice and her imaginary band of pirates with dark personalities. No information or history of the show could be found online, making the story stranger. As the dialogue progresses, a handful of posters come to the eerie realization that they have had the same nightmares from watching the show. And even more, it's discovered that the show these posters thought they were watching when they were kids only the consisted boys in the of 30 room. minutes of static, as when one of the posters in the conversation asked his mom if she remembered the show, she recollected his sitting in front of the TV watching static for half an hour. What makes this creepypasta stand out is that it doesn't come with just a text story. There are videos of poorly recorded or damaged footage of what was allegedly the show Candle Cove. Number 8, Normal Porn for Normal People. This urban legend starts off with a standard right. chain letter urging recipients to visit the website normalpornfornormalpeople.com because it was for the quote-unquote good of mankind. Naturally, having such an intriguing URL, many decided to check it out. As it turned out, it was a fairly basic website with a wall of text on the main page. The only thing that stuck out was the site's tagline, Normal Porn for Normal People, a website dedicated to the eradication of abnormal sexuality. Do I have to skip that, this? Nothing was a Do I have to skip this? Mm, no. Particular interest. Once people visited the site, most would leave after seeing that it was just a bunch of words. However, those who stuck around found out that a lot of the words in the boring text were actually download links to various distressing videos. The shocked people would then gather around on forums and share their experiences, as well as the videos themselves. Most of the alleged videos were horrifying and disturbing, with the tamest being called Peanut.avi, which showed a man and woman feeding a dog peanut butter sandwiches for half an hour. 
But then the videos got worse, with one called Stumps API, showing a man with no legs being forced to break dance in a kitchen by someone off screen. That's not even the worst of it. Descriptions for the rest of the videos could be found on the creepypasta page for this story. It sounds like a deep interested. web. Number seven, Lavender Town Syndrome. Oh, there you go, Pokemon. Based off of Lavender Town from Pokemon Red and Green, this creepypasta focuses on something called Lavender Town Syndrome. According to the creepypasta, this was a peak in suicides and illness of children between the ages of 7 and 12, shortly after the release of Pokemon Red and Green versions. Rumors say that these suicides and illnesses only occurred after the children playing the game reached Lavender Town, whose theme music had extremely high frequencies that studies allegedly showed that only children and young teens can hear since their ears are more sensitive. After the Lavender Town tone incident, the programmers had fixed Lavender Town's theme music to be at a lower frequency. What's good about this creepypasta is its simplicity in playing with nostalgic fears that many could relate to from visiting Lavender Town when they were younger. Number 6, 1999. Simply known as 1999, oh, this bad. story is one of the most realistic and chilling creepypastas on the internet. The tale follows the journey of a Canadian blogger named Elliot as he tracks down the meaning of the mysterious TV channel that he watched in the year 1999. He remembered it being extremely sketchy, and in hindsight, he realized that it was most likely run by a local predator. As he continued to investigate, he learned that the man running the channel was attempting to lure children into his house for sacrificial purposes. To top it all off, Elliot also realized that the crazed man was torturing and killing children while wearing a bear costume and calling himself Mr. Bear. Jeez. Number 5. Ben Drowned Oh, I know this one. Hacked video games are often found in creepypastas, but none is more infamous than Ben Drowned, the story of Matt, a college-age boy who picks up a hat or maybe glitched cartridge of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask at a garage sale. As the boy plays, he captures the strange occurrences in the game, such as all the text reading, You shouldn't have done that, along with a nightmarish figure that stalks the player at random times. The strange occurrences are not limited to the game, however, as it ultimately culminates into a full haunting. The narrator and Ben's fates are left up to the reader's imagination, but the tale implies that a happy ending is not a possibility. This creepypasta is one of the few that includes more than just a story. There are many videos of the disturbing gameplay, including the famous warped soundtrack enhancing the creepiness to the story. Well, Number 4. Abandoned by Disney Huh. This story is about a supposed abandoned Jungle Book themed resort Disney built in Emerald Isle, North Carolina, called Mowgli's Palace. Mowgli's the storyteller Palace. came across a blog post about someone in the box. Look how creepy they look. Would you want those Mickeys to come near you? I wouldn't. Look at that. Bruh. exploring a similar Disney resort called Treasure Island that was also oh. suddenly abandoned. And reporting oh, extremely creepy and unexplained findings. It so the like storyteller goes to find Mowgli's palace in Emerald Isle to see if it's equally interesting. While exploring the creepy abandoned palace, he comes across a door that reads mascots only, which then leads into a character preparation room. Upon entry, he sees a bunch of mascot suits hanging on the wall. Upon removing a Donald Duck head from the costume, a human skull tumbles out. That's the freak. The mascots are full of dead bodies. In the middle of the room, lying on the floor, is a Mickey Mouse costume. As he attempts to take a picture, the mascot stands up and removes its head. The narrator flees the scene, and that's where the story ends. Number three, Squidward's suicide. I know about this. This creepypasta is told from the perspective of a person who interned at Nickelodeon Studios in 2005 as an animation student. The student and some co-workers received a tape to edit titled Squidward's Suicide, which they initially assumed was just an office prank. The video consists of Squidward sitting on a bed, while strange and upsetting noises play and become louder in the background. This happened after Squidward was booed off stage at his clarinet concert by everyone in Bikini Bottom, who all seemed to have disturbing, hyper-realistic red eyes. The scene with Squidward on his bed is spliced with quick flashes of dead children and gore. He 
each time the noise is getting louder when cutting back to Squidward, his face shaded black with red eyes now as well. Eventually, Squidward shoots himself after a detached, deep voice commands him. Yeah, almost, That's the yeah. end of the video. This is probably the most famous yeah, lost episode of Creepypasta up there with Dead Bart. Number two, the Russian sleep experiments. One of the most famous creepypastas, Russian researchers in the late 1940s kept five people awake for 15 days using an experimental gas. They were kept in a sealed environment to carefully monitor their oxygen intake so the gas didn't kill them. This was before surveillance cameras, so they had only microphones and five-inch thick glass windows into the chamber to monitor them. The chamber was stocked with books, cots without bedding, running water and toilet, and enough dry food to last all five for over a month. The test subjects were political prisoners deemed enemies of the state during World War II. Mm -hmm. For the first five days or so, everything was fine, but things slowly start to fall apart. You're not dragging Number me. Number one, Jeff the Killer. Here we go. Jeff the Killer was a relatively normal boy who went crazy after getting burned in a fire caused by three bullies. His face became severely messed up from the fire, but on the same night he was released from the hospital, he fixed the problem by cutting a joker-like smile into his face so he could smile forever, and he burnt off his eyelids so he could stay awake forever. Something inside Jeff snapped that day, killing his own family, even his brother that he was so protective of earlier in the story. After killing his family, Jeff ran away, and according to the story, legend has it, Jeff is still out there, and the last thing a person hears before he kills them is go to sleep. Yeah. I don't want to encounter him. So that's it for this list. No, I know I missed a lot of great creepypastas, but I couldn't fit them all on this list. If you would like to see a part two of this video sometime in the future, let me know. What's your favorite creepypasta? What videos would you like to see in the future? Check out some uh, other bits. That's a good way to end a video. <laughs> Finished. I'm gonna end this video and then I can go relax. My mom's also tired. Mm. Ah, jeez, I hate it. Nice to, to be honest, my favorite, my favorite creepy pasta characters that someone made is just the killer. Don't know why, just this. It's like Jeff, but a female version. All right, that was twenty of the scariest and most. Iconic creep pastas ever. Yeah, I might do part two some other time, but right now I'm tired. I like to go relax. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, to all those creep pastas. That's what you get. And I'm never going near that doll that they said. See y'all tomorrow. Wham, bam, sham.